session of the Planning Commission of the City of Lancaster will please come to order. Uh, tonight, I will offer the invocation. Uh, the pledge will be led by uh, Vice Chair Jacobs. Please stand. Shall we all pray together? We thank you, Father, for this day and for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this community of Lancaster. We honor and pray for those members of the armed forces we remember and are grateful for those who have served, and especially for those who have sacrificed their life for the freedoms we enjoy in this great country. We humbly ask you for your help and for your guidance to identify the problems we can rectify in our community. Guide us in our efforts to administer the Planning Commission's objectives. Help us to use our time and energy wisely, not to waste it on ins insignificant matters that benefit no one. Please bless us all to your service. I humbly ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. There is no comma. It's one nation under God. <clears throat> Mayor, the roll call, please. Commissioners Randy Hall. Here. Cassandra Harvey. Present. Raj Molly. Here. Baby and Tarciano. Here. Kave Elihu is absent. Vice Chairman Dan Jacobs. Here. Chairman James Vos. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple of announcements. Um, for those of you that, of you that uh, are not aware, Commissioner Harvey has been appointed to, as a director of the redevelopment agency of the city of Lancaster, and uh, this commission is very proud of her, and uh, we just congratulate you. In another important matter, Commissioner Tarasiano has an announcement to share with us about the streets of Lancaster. I was not in contention for the Ben Axel Award. <laughs> <laughs> You're too modest, so how did you place? Uh, I was fortunate enough to win the commissioner's final. Congratulations. A lot of fun. Thank you. So, so the, the planning commission still rules the streets of Lancaster? Is that how it goes? Absolutely. Perfect. That we defended our title Thank successfully. You. That's great. So, public business from the floor. If an individual is unable to stay through the entire meeting due to extenuating circumstances, a total of 10 minutes is provided at this time, which input may be given regarding agenda items. Individual speakers would be limited to two minutes each. Do we have any early speakers, Mr. Ludicky? None have indicated, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any person who would like to address the Commission on any agendized item is requested to complete a speaker's card for the recording secretary and identify the agenda item you would like to discuss. Each person will be given an opportunity to address the Commission at the time the item is discussed by the Planning Commission. Speaker's cards are available at the rear of the chamber and um, individual speakers would be limited to three minutes each. Uh, just a point of clarification, uh, tonight we have a uh, public hearing and typically what happens is, is that <clears throat> the applicant and their representatives have an opportunity to present uh, their project uh, really with an unlimited time frame and um, then after speakers for and against would speak. Uh, then they would have then the applicant would have an opportunity to rebut so the applicant and the representatives are not limited to three minutes each however individual speakers are whether you're for or against <clears throat> the first item is the consent calendar which is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of September 19 2011 May I have a motion please I move that we approve the minutes from regular meeting of September 19, 2011. Thank you. I second. Thank you. Please vote.
Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. For the record, uh, we have received in advance of the meeting uh, corrections to uh, item number two on page three of the um, agenda and on conditional use permit 11-10, a staff report uh, has been amended on pages one and two resolution, our resolution, proposed resolution, I should say, on pages one, two, and three have been amended, and the condition list has an added condition number 18. So, um, all right. Uh, the first item is a new public hearing, which is conditional use permit 11-10. Um, the applicant is, is it Tully Huffacker, is it? Do I have that correct? I'm sorry, Huffaker, pardon me. Um, the project is a proposed conditional use permit for a concert ni venue nightclub um, with on sale consumption of alcoholic beverages um, in an industrial zone. So, without objection, the public hearing is open on this matter. And could we have a staff report, please? <coughs> Chairman Vos and Commissioners, the applicant, Tolly Hoffaker, is asking for um, a conditional use permit to allow a concert venue and nightclub at Industry Theater with on sale consumption of alcoholic beverages, uh, which would be beer and wine only. And that would be number one. Number two, to operate an entertainment use for a municipal code and nightclub. And number three is to ask for a waiver. The um, A CUP is required for the entertainment and for on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages. The hours of operation for the use would be 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, starting with weekends and with one day per week. The entertainment events would include music, such as live bands, DJs, and dancing, occurring on weekends and occasionally during the week. Um, it, the, the applicant proposes to establish a venue for local performers to reach audiences of all ages or restricted ages depending on their performance. He could have 18-year-olds um, to 22-year-olds at the same place, or he could have younger children, or he could have just 21-year-olds. There is a, um, he is also requesting um, alcohol as part of the venue, and he has um, established Security and in-house, he's hiring security and in-house security would be provided. The security proposed by the applicant would exceed that recommended by the Sheriff's Department, which is a minimum of one security guard per 100 patrons. Mr. Huff, Huffaker is planning on having for small events, which are under 100 guests, two in-house guards, between 100 and 250 guests, one outsourced guard and two in-house guards, and anything between 250 and three 60, he would have two outsourced guards and two in-house guards. The applicant would have a strict policy, which would be ma to maintain, um, to prevent guests from entering and exiting the venue and from loitering in the parking lot and the surrounding properties. The parking lot would be monitored by security. An ID check and ticket sales, you can see at the, on the floor plan, would be at the very entrance, uh, would be at the point of purchase they would give a wristband for those who would be identified as um, 21 years of age or older. Alcohol would be served and consumed only at, age, at an age-restricted lounge, highlighted in yellow on the floor plan. And no sales or consumption are allowed outside of the 682-square-foot lounge. Sufficient parking exists for the project. Um, the applicant is also requesting a waiver under Section 1742.040.C of the Lancaster Municipal Code to allow the sale of beer and wine within 300 feet of religious assembly. Basically, um, what Mr. Huffaker is proposing to do is to ensure that if you were going to sell beer and wine, it would be within the 682 square foot exclusive lounge. No other alcohol would be served anywhere else in the facility. The wristband would be provided identifying patrons who are 21 years of age or older. Um, the, 
the applicant would have sec security. He would provide security within the inside and outside of the establishment to prevent any loitering, increase need for police service, or, and to reduce any negative impacts to the existing uses in the surrounding areas. There is sufficient parking, and he has indicated that he would not operate at the same time as the church, which currently operates on uh, Wednesday evenings and Mondays. He indicates the, um, that the sale of alcohol is necessary for the economic success of the business, and the applicant would be required to comply with all standard conditions from the alcohol ordinance for on-sale alcoholic beverage establishments. Operation of the entertainment uses would be conducted by well-trained staff in a manner that would maintain the atmosphere of the business park. The Sheriff's Department has had, does not oppose the uh, request for conditional use permit, and staff believes that the applicant's proposal would provide the city with a concert venue that currently has limited availability in the Antelope Valley, and that the alcohol beverage establishment will meet a specific community need in conjunction with the concert. Staff is recommending approval of the proposed alcohol use and entertainment use for industry theater because the proposed project meets the requirements of the zone. It will meet a community need, providing a concert venue. It will not adversely affect nearby residents, businesses, because the entertainment will occur when the, within the building and security would be provided inside and outside the premises. The conditions of approval have been included, which would ensure the safety and general welfare of the surrounding area and making sure that they, it would be maintained. Staff believes the Planning Commission could make a favorable recommendation, favorable de determination in support of the proposal. And that concludes my recommendation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Donna. Uh, just a point of uh, clarification. Uh, did you say that the uh, church facility operates on Wednesday and Monday? You might have Maybe you misstated that. It should be Wednesday and Sunday, right? That's correct. Okay. Just so we're clear. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions of Ms. Donovan before we hear uh, comment? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, is any of the security armed security, or are they just uh, nightstick and big chest security? <laughs> I don't know. He's hiring security. You all probably have to ask Mr. Huffaker. We'll uh, take that up when the applicant presents then. Anything further from anyone? Nope. All right then. So, the applicant or the representative, you're welcome to give us a presentation. And if you'd identify yourself for the record, I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm Tully Huffaker, and I'm the applicant for the conditional right. use permit. Um, I'm trying to bring a concert venue to the Antelope Valley, where we have desperately needed uh, organized entertainment for youths and uh, younger people who choose not to drink. And um, I've been a musician for my whole life. I've promoted concerts and organized them and maintained every aspect from security to promotions to you know, serving beverages and drinks to the to people who need them. I've uh, I've always wanted a, a real venue in this area. We've had lots of hit and miss venues with no permits, with no. They just don't do what they're supposed to do. They're very unorganized. They're not working with the city. I'm looking to bring a highly organized concert venue to the city that can you know operate, making the city happy and also pleasing the youths and kids and you know artists and local musicians um, we're trying to you know we're trying to just bring a safe environment kids can go there and play with a professional musician they can play with their bands kids need you know outlets for music and creativity I'm looking to provide a secure maintained venue for kids to go and and uh, promote themselves entertain learn meet with other local musicians and artists and uh, network um, and we're looking to just uh, help out, you know, the community. We're looking to bring a place. When I was a musician, we hardly had anywhere to perform. I performed at, for instance, the Fantasy Hall, El Dorado, these venues which went out of business because of their poor organization, poor management. 
I'm looking to change that in the Antelope Valley. Um, we need a venue for kids to go. We need something for 18 to 21 year olds to do when they're not, you know, when they're not at school. They want to go out. They want to have fun in a in a safe environment. They don't need to go drinking. They don't need to go do drugs. It will be a, a place for people, kids, artists, musicians to come get together and uh, network and promote creativity and promote more positive uh, outlets of energy. Um. All right, there may be some questions if you would okay. just hold right there. Anyone? Go ahead. On um, said kids a lot and alcohol that you want a waiver for, and so how do you propose to prevent them from mixing? Well, we have our lounge area, which is a pretty well-constrained area. It has one front door where we will have a security guard and an employee checking IDs. Um, at that point, we will easily be able to control who enters and exits that, that room, which is its own room. It's divided completely from the rest of the area. On the other side, there's another door right next to the concession stand, so there will be an employee and a security guard at both ends of the door. So we'll have a very, it's pretty small area, two doors, entrance, exit. I'll have two employees on both sides of the door. Alcohol stays in there, doesn't come out. You go in there, you drink a beer, you go back out to the general area where all ages are welcomed. And um, we just keep the beer in the lounge, and that's, that's the plan. Do you have any um, procedures in place for controlling how much alcohol they consume so they don't go out and drive drunk or well, yeah, well, get of course, out of with any yeah, sorry, with any um, you know bartender, they're going to need to practice uh, safe serving habits. I will I will hire people who are aware that you can't overserve in people, and also this this place it, it's not to be set up as a bar. It's it's a concert venue. It's Beers will be overpriced. I will not. I don't want people over drinking. I will tell my employees we don't want over drinking. It's a problem. It's bad for me. It's bad for security. It's bad for my insurance. It's all around bad. So it's in everyone's best interest for us to maintain how much people are drinking. We will have a bartender who's a, a professional who will know when people have had too much, and um, that's what we'll have to shoot for. Have you picked out security guards? Are they going to be the Armstrong type, or are they going to be armed? Well, with various shows, it would, security measures would alter depending on the show. I've spoken to Lance and OPSEC. My security will be, it'll be going between them depending on how, how my, my rates are looking. Um, for bigger events, I think if I need an armed guard, I would get an armed guard if, if that's what is suggested, because I honestly am not quite sure what the city would prefer. But I would just, I, my main goal is doing what it takes to make it legitimate and make it so you guys are happy, make it so we're happy, because that, that's what my goal is. It's not for me to open a business, it's for me to open a legitimate business that everyone's happy with. So I'm not going to go out of business in a year because, you, because I'm unhappy with you guys or you're unhappy with me. I'm looking to do a legitimate thing, whatever it takes, so it it's, can be here and it'll be right. So um, Earlier this year we had... Um nightclub slash restaurant thing that we had to pull their conditional use permit on and one of the complaints was there's a lot of activity happening in, in the parking lot yeah are you have plans for keeping the trash down placed up uh, yeah with with a lot of concerts if, as you'll see in a lot of uh, concert venues in Los Angeles and uh, the surrounding areas they have no ins and out policies which would mean you come in and you don't leave and when you leave you leave so people will come in for the concert, and when the concert is over, they will exit the premises. They, we will not allow people to come in and go to their cars to get a drink or go to their cars to do whatever people do. You're going to come in, and you're going to watch the concert, and the event will end, and we will see everybody out, and we'll have a guard on, on the area until everyone's gone, and then we'll clean up after everybody and go home. I have no more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Go ahead, Mr. Trossino. Um Are you going to be a hands-on promoter, or are you going to be outsourcing the promotion of the concerts? Um, I will be promoting most of the concerts myself. We have, I've spoken to a couple people about rentals for the, the venue. 
a rental, we would still be managing. Our staff would still be on scene. They would just organize the entertainment of the night. So say a promoter would come in and his friend's band would headline, but we would still control the show as if it was one of our own. So I'll be promoting the occasional concert, and then we'll have other people promoting. But as far as managing and coordination, my people and me and my staff, we will take care of all of that. So but the actual promotion, because to, to me, a lot be of overseen. concert people, promotion is organizing the concert, um, promoting it with flyers, and that could be somebody else, but we will do the management, the coordination, security. So we will take control of the event itself. Great. And then uh, staff reports states that you'll be, you'll stop serving alcohol two hours before yeah. uh, any show. Yeah. And then you can begin, resume serving, you know, one hour after. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No. Well, thank you. Yeah. No. Chair. So that raises a question. Give us a couple of examples on a venue that would complete the sales of alcoholic beverages prior to two hours prior to and one hour after. What would the time frames be? Excuse me, you, I, I didn't quite hear you. I'm sorry. Don't understand the question? No, I, did, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. All right. So let's say for an example, you uh, open your doors at 6 p.m. and you you start at uh, you start your concert at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So you, so the condition says you uh, have to conclude alcohol beverage sales two hours prior to the beginning of the concert, mm -hmm. right? So that would be I'm not selling alcohol up to two hours before the event. Maybe I misunderstood the uh, the conditions. My understanding was that we would only sell beer during the event. Ah, so, so we're not doing it before something's happening, and so we're only selling, serving beer when there is uh, an entertainment act on. So, so if folks are confined to the 600, 600 and some odd square feet of um, uh, lounge or whatever you wish to call it, and the sales of alcoholic beverages are only when the entertainment's underway, mm -hmm. that'd be right? Yeah. How do the folks that are in uh, that confined space uh, avail themselves of the uh, entertainment? I guess they don't, huh? Well, they'll they'll hear it, and um, we actually have a I, I I got a TV so that we can project the concert onto a TV in the lounge, and we we're considering cutting a hole in the wall so they could see it. But really, the the over the overlying image or idea is that we want to do what the city and the state will let us do. So that's what the ABC told us we had to do. So that's what we're prepared to do because we just want it to be legitimate and we want we want everything to be okay. So they told us what to do and we're just going to do it. Thank you. Do you have any more questions, Mr. Tarasiano? Uh, I think I, Sylvia wanted to clarify some. Did you want to go ahead? Um, in clarification, I, I would direct your attention to condition, proposed condition number four, which basically states that the uh, sale of alcohol could not commence earlier than two hours prior to a scheduled concert and would have to terminate not later than one hour after the conclusion of the concert. In any event, they could not go outside the, the otherwise uh, hours of operation as stated. Okay, so Thank what you. if it's so not they, a concert? It, well, for example, if they had a concert that went from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the evening, they could I get, begin... I got that part. What if it's not a concert? If it's not a concert. Right. If it's some other method or well, some uh, other production. Event. Yeah, some other production other than a concert because the, because the permit, proposed permit is for, quote, a nightclub and a concert venue, is it not? Yes, nightclub as defined by our code. Right. If it was some other form of entertainment, um, I, the same basic restriction would apply. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Huffaker, you mentioned that there will be limitations with the wristband of who could partake in the cordoned off area that was alcohol being served. Mm -hmm. What would prevent, say, if I'm 22 years old and I have friends that are on the outside of that, from me going to the outside, what controls that? 
the well, provisions in place for that? Yeah, well, that would be we'd have the two employees on both sides, and the alcohol is sold and consumed in that area, just because that's how the ABC defines the license or the permit that I would be applying for. So it would be sold and consumed right there. If someone walks out and they they have a beer, it would be pretty obvious because I'm going to have an employee at the outside of it, and there's nothing you should be bringing from the lounge to the the dance room. So if you have we wouldn't allow that to happen. So would it be fair to say that you'd have a zero pol uh, zero tolerance? Yeah. That if someone were caught, that it you would make them? Yes. Okay. They'd, they'd leave. Be gone. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? No. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have any other anyone else who wishes to speak on? As the applicant. Oh. Good evening and welcome. Hello. Mr. Rodeo. Yeah, I'm the actually the owner of the building that this uh, venue will be in. <clears throat> and for the I, record, if you oh, don't mind. Oh, Arnold Rodeo. Thank you. Um, and I own the building. I own the building adjacent to it. I also have businesses in the building. And I'd just like to say when this was first proposed and the realtor came to me and said that I was looking at it, I said no because I didn't want a nightclub in our building. And he said, no, this isn't that. Come talk to this kid and uh, listen to what he has to say because it's not what you think it is. And I go, yeah, right, okay. So I did, and I looked at his business plan and what it is, and this is not a nightclub. This is a concert venue. And then I started looking at his business plan, and he's raised all the money to do this himself by doing this work. He's investing tens of thousands of dollars into this facility to hold these concerts. The controls he put in, everything that he put in, uh, he's never questioned it. And believe me, I'm two doors down with my plumbing company. I don't need a bunch of trash when I go to work Monday morning or some drunk in, in the planners. My main office overlooks this facility. So when I'm working on the weekends, which I do quite often at night, I'm looking at it. I don't need a bunch of bad situations. But I do recognize this for what it is, and it's an opportunity for small bands like friends of my son who can't play to large venues but can have a hundred of their friends come, listen to the band in a safe environment, controlled, and maybe have a beer. Most of the uh, attendees will probably be over 21. Uh, he's got extremely rigorous control, which is one of the things I insisted. Uh, Everything that I've talked about that I personally had a problem with, because uh, I'm not a big fan of alcohol. I don't drink. But the controls are there, and this is a venue where it's like going to a Dodger game and not being able to get a beer. This is something that people are going to come to appreciate the music. I looked at conflicts with all the other businesses, uh, and that's why I said you can't do anything on a Sunday. You can't do anything on a Wednesday. No problem. They agreed to it. I've talked to the other businesses. I believe letters have been provided. None of the other businesses uh, have problems with this, except the church, um, which I found out about last night. Um, but the other ones are actually excited. A couple of the um, at the charter school, I was talking to one of the uh, people there, and some of the students overheard me and thought, this is great. We don't have anywhere we can go and just listen to a uh, kind of smaller band that we like. There's, most of the places serve food, most of the places have long hours, most of the places serve uh, hard alcohol. This isn't that type of place. This is people that are going to go to appreciate the music. Another thing that they can do is they can have a, a comic come and do a comic performance. They can do quinceaneras there. There's other events that they can do other than the music concerts that this allows a venue. And we don't have anything like that in Lancaster. It's a, it's a good program. I think there's good controls. And believe me, if there's problems out there, you don't have to worry about it because I personally will be in there cleaning it up. This is my buildings. I have a lot of money invested. I have my businesses located in these buildings, my personal businesses also. And it's very important to me that I make a good, uh, good image to my clients. So that's. I just want to give you a little history. As far as the owner, it's a good deal, and I'm very, very – Conservative. I've turned a lot of businesses down that have wanted to be in these spaces because I didn't think they fit 
or I didn't like the idea of what the business actually was. Uh, so I hope you uh, can appreciate what this is because I think it's a very positive thing. Mr. Rodi, thank you. Um, there may be some questions if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, it, one question came to mind. Uh, typically with young people, there's uh, always younger people, not young, younger people, younger than the 20s possibly. Right. Um, there's always a concern about folks congregating and the younger kids, if you will, or children tend to congregate, uh, particularly at entertainment venues. At least that's been my observation. Maybe you've seen the same thing. Um, as the landlord, I, how do you propose on dealing with that? Um, yeah, I personally have a problem with it. You know, I've been by uh, what happens out of schooners. I've been by the purple martini and that stuff. You know, I know the places that are issues in town, and I didn't want anything like that. Uh, I've already told Tully, and I have it the way within the power of my lease, that if I have problems like that, if I see a bunch of, you know, teeny boppers out in the parking lot trying to get a secondary, you know, fix off of the thing, and it's not being monitored, I personally will shut him down and evict him. I don't need it. I don't need it for my insurance. I don't need it for the risk. And I got a lot more risk than he does. So, uh... I have some pretty good language in my lease also, uh, and I'm a lot uh, tougher and a lot meaner than a conditional use permit, believe me. So, you know, our thing is, in, in my feeling on this and talking to people, this is not a teenage venue. Most of this stuff is going to be over 21. The people, and it's funny because I've had, um, I've talked to people about it, and people keep asking me, where's this at? Do you have cards? Because they want to do it. And most of these are groups that are like, Guys are 40s and 50s that have a little jazz band or something like that that are looking for places to do it. So I've actually handed out a bunch of the cards for people that are interested in this. Uh, and it's weird is they're not rock bands. They're jazz bands, blues bands, country western bands, uh, a lot more older groups. So I think most of the people, from what I can gather, are going to be older. This isn't going to be a teenage hangout with a bunch of 15 and 16-year-olds. It's not designed for that. Uh, you know, it's going to cost you to get in for one thing. And it's going to be monitored. Um, so my feeling is that's not going to be a concern. If it is, it's going to get addressed. Thank you. There may be other questions. Thank you. Mr. Rodia, I, yeah. I do have another question. Um, and I'll, I'll take this as a zero tolerance. Have you actually written in the lease agreement that you will shut that venue down if you were to, you know, find the trash and that sort of thing? Yeah, I have general provisions in my leases that if you don't take care of the property, if you create a nuisance, uh, any of those things, I have the... the um, no, explicitly written the way you just verbalized to us. Um, it's more of a general provision, but you know something, I can always modify the lease if you guys want it to be written that way. Okay. I, really have, here right now have, and I don't know that we have the power to, right, to, to no. condition that. but uh, You don't have to condition it, but I tell you, if you ask me to do it and I say I'll do it, consider it done. Thank you for your comments. All right, any other, speak, uh, any other speakers on behalf of the applicant or the applicant? Nope. All right. Uh, then shall we hear from... We have speakers for have and against, or just I against? have several in favor and several against, Mr. Chairman. All right, so let's um, let's take the in favors first, and and just for the record, we do have uh, two letters of I believe it's two. Beg your pardon, it's more than two. Four letters in favor in our file. All right, go ahead. Uh, Richard Huffaker. Good evening, Hello. Mr. <clears throat> Huffaker. You, yeah, may, you might be related to the other Mr. Huffaker. Yeah. How about that? I'm the dad. And welcome. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, basically, I just wanted to kind of he, – my son touched on so many of the points. Um, I can see that the, as a business, it really exists for older people and that the older people coming to the business is going to sustain it. But I know that one of the things that's driven Tully to create this is that in the community, 
And I, as a, t as a high school teacher myself, I'm aware of the fact that in this community, the kids don't have that much to do. The kids that are into music, into art, we know what they do. They drive out into the desert, they go to somebody's parents, their parents aren't there, and they're doing all the things we don't want them to do. They have no supervision. There's nothing for them to do. They're bored. So on the days when there's no business, Tully has the freedom to hire a local band and have kids only. But here's a place for them to be safe, where they're being supervised, where they can enjoy their music, where they can talk and hang out, and it's safe. They're not out there doing the stupid stuff that they, we know they're going to be doing. If, we, if they're sitting around bored, boredom is was a de the devil's workshop. Give them something to do. They need something to do. Um, it seems sad to me that he's, he's tried so hard to do this, consulting with the city, and they, he was directed to this building as the ideal location for this, biz, for this project, and yet now it seems that somehow it's turned out to not be the perfect place. Um, it's given the go-ahead, and yet somehow it seems, it's, I guess, it's, a, it's a more of a problem than we thought. <laughs> But anyway, um, I think it's a great plus to the community. I think it is something, as he told you, as a, as a promoter and as a musician himself, there is nothing like this in the community. It's something that we, that we need. People drive down below to go to places like this. So we need it, we need it here in, the, in, uh, in Lancaster. So I think it would be a real plus to the community. Thank you Thank very you. much for your comments. Do I have another speaker? Uh, Chuck Hoy. Mr. Hoy, good evening. I am Chuck Hoy with Charles Hoy & Associates in Lancaster, California. Uh, I'm a realtor. I'm the, actually the broker that uh, did the lease on uh, this situation. And Arnie does, I believe he does have that in this lease, by the way, that uh, the, the facility has to be kept clean and neat, and he can't be uh, causing problems for the neighbors. So I believe we've already addressed that. Uh, the reason why I wanted to speak is I've got a 24-year-old son, a 26-year-old daughter, and they say they have to go down below for entertainment. It's just, it's just not up here. And, uh, it's, and they're not out to go drinking and, and cause all kind of hate and discontent. I mean, they're good kids, but they want to be able to go to different venues, and we don't have it up here. It would be nice for some place where they can go, some place where there is security, some place that's not just some old bar. And that's mostly what's up here for the kids to go to. Once they turn 21, is go to a bar. And I don't... I don't go to bars. I don't want my kids going to bars. Um, yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think it's great that he's offering something like it. And there are there are good entertainers up here that are small bands. I mean, uh, with this uh, at Mario's Music when they were around, they had all their people there. They were in the 50s and 60s. Played great music. They really didn't have a place to go and and entertain and have people come and see them. Those good uh, people in, that. Uh, uh, and do piano work or concert work, and there's no place for them to go do that. I just think this is a, a great venue for us, and uh, I hope that you see the same thing. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Got another speaker? Eric Wilson. Mr. Wilson? Are these in favor or opposed? Opposed. Pardon? Opposed. Opposed? All right. Go ahead. Uh, Tony Bowers. Good evening, Mr. Bowers, and welcome. Hi, my name is Tony Bowers, and I'm actually uh, the youth minister at the church. Uh, I'm all for the youth. Like he said, they might not have venues to go to, but I don't think the, the, the place where he's looking to put this venue needs to be next to a church. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other venues around that may be suitable for his company, but uh, not, not, not next to New Life Community Church. Um, I've been a youth. I wasn't always a minister. Okay? I've been to uh, clubs, 18, always drinking. You can't control it. Parking lot, can't control the parking lot drinking. Young people younger than 18 will be there. Um, we will not be able to, I mean, they will not be able to um, stop that. But my thing is, for the young people at our church, we have 40% probably youth in our church right now, young people. 
and we're trying to show them how to live for the Lord in a sense and, and to stay away from the drinking and the partying and things of that nature. And I just think with that being right next door to us, it's going to create a problem as far as young people. Um, we've been there, we've been in this area for a while. I've been here seven years and I've seen our young people grow. And through the Lord, they've grown mightily, but um, I strongly oppose this venue being next to us. It's, n it's not good. Um, I know I, I referee football. I referee high school football. I do all that. And I know some of those young people will end up there, and they will hang out. I know it. They know it. So I just think that um, I oppose that strongly. Um, gentleman said, you know, he's having a reading where they choose not to drink, 18 below. They will drink. Um, we have church more than just Mondays and Wednesdays. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, see, I was going to correct that. Sundays and Wednesdays, like they said. Like, actually, today, there's prayer night for the young people. Thursday is Bible study for the young people. So it's just not Sundays and Wednesdays that we have activities. We have activities throughout the week. And so, and they're nightly activities. So I just think that um, I hope that you guys will... Uh, um, deny his use of permit and uh, help us continue to help the young people. Any questions? Thank you for your comments. Excuse me, folks. You'll have an opportunity. Go right ahead. It's okay um, uh, to express your feelings. However, we would appreciate it if you would address the commission at the podium. Um, this is not an entertainment venue, clapping and cheering or booing or whatever. Uh, we try to maintain some decorum here, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, so do we have the next speaker, please? Pamela Cheatham. Is it Ms. Cheatham? Yes, good evening and welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Pamela Cheatham, concerned parent. Um, I do attend um, New Life Community Church. Um, I do have minor children. And as Tony Bowers had previously stated, um, you can't control people and alcohol. Um, ch children under the age of 21, if they want to drink, they're going to drink. Um, I had a situation where one of my children actually got a hold of alcohol in the Lancaster School District. So if they want to drink, they're going to drink. It doesn't matter about an age um, requirement. My concern um, as a parent is there is um, outside activities aside from Wednesdays and Sundays. There's youth choir rehearsals. There's Bible studies. Um, right now, when we attend Bible study, you have the, the college that dries a little too fast. Um, as we're attempting to attend church, I can't imagine this with alcohol in the equation. Um, I don't want any of my children or the people that I go to church with to be a statistic of a drunk driver or, or anything breaking out. I'm greatly opposed. I hope the request is denied. Um, I googled um, violent acts just this year alone um, that have occurred in a nightclub environment. Um, he mentioned about security. Um, on October 10th alone, um, a security um, company um, had to ask for police for additional assistance because um, one of their security staff was killed. Um, two people were shot outside of a nightclub um, during a drive-by. So we don't want any of this kind of thing to happen where we go to church. Um, there was just multiple, multiple incidences um, that you could see on the Internet. And um, I thank you for you your have, You have 30 seconds more if you care to continue. I'm good. I'm just 
totally opposed as a parent. Thank you, ma'am. And when the buzzer goes off, it is a little startling. So uh, the next speaker, please. Uh, Sharon Harper. Good evening, Ms. Harper, and welcome. Take your time. Okay. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak um, tonight on behalf of New Life Community Church, representing my pastor, who couldn't be here this evening, Pastor Casey E. Marsh. I know both Arnie and Chuck because um, I worked with them when we negotiated our lease with them, um, and it was um, approved last June of 2010. And at that time, um, our church has been in operation since 1995. We recently moved to our current location, and in that search, we were very concerned about the environment that our church was going to be in. Um, we represent biblical teachings and principles. We teach our members, especially our children, to live by those principles, and that we wanted them to have an, an environment that was conducive to uh, nurturing them, developing their talents, both as individuals in a collective body as our church. And so when we were approached um, to actually take over a lease of an existing church, so it was a church there a year before we moved in. So it has been um, a church environment. There was a comment about this being the ideal location. I don't know how a nightclub venue next to a church is an ideal location. Our sign was up there. Both individuals knew that we were a church and operating at the time that this location was identified. And it just is not conducive. One of the conditions or, or statements in our conditional um, use permit that was given that it said when it was um, granted, it would not um, adversely affect the health, peace, comfort, and welfare of the community. If this gets approved by your commission, that venue will affect the health, peace, comfort, and welfare of our members. Um, it, it has also been downplayed that it is a concert venue. If it's a concert venue, then why does the conditional use permit allow a nightclub to be there? The nightclub is not conducive to the operation of a church. Again, I implore you not to approve this permit. We're going to have a problem with our young people. We're going to have a problem with drinking and alcohol. We're going to have a problem with cleanup. It closes down at 2 p.m. in the morning on Saturday. I haven't heard any conditions about it being cleaned up and ready for a church. There's always trash that is outside. Amen. As a representative of the church, I understood that we could, I could have longer than... Yeah, Ms. Harper, I'm, I'm, your uh, time has expired. So that's not... No. I thought as a representative of the church, it would be longer. Thank you. Okay. I do appreciate your time and you. listening to me. Thank you. Do we have another speaker, Mr. Ludicky? Uh Jerry Harper. Mr. Harper, and welcome. Thank you, uh, Commissioners and uh, Chairman. Uh, my name is Jerry Harper, and we'll give you the one-two punch from the uh, Harper family tonight. Uh, but I have served this community in the past, even though I'm not a resident of the city of Lancaster. I was the undersheriff in this county for six years, and I was a member of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for 37 years. I also served as the director of the California Youth Authority for about four years, in which uh, I had uh, supervision of uh, children, if you will, from 11 to about 25 years of age who had had a lot of problems with alcohol and drugs and violence, and therefore they were under my uh, supervision. I was also the chief probation officer uh, for more than five years in the county of uh, San Bernardino. So I think uh, in the almost 50 years of experience, uh, of law enforcement, corrections, probation, and parole, that I have some qualifications to talk about this. And I respect the, uh, the comments of the gentleman who preceded us, the proponents. 
Uh, I think there was one unfortunate comment, the reference to Dodger Stadium. And, of course, we remember what happened there when several drunks beat up an individual who was still trying to recover from his injuries uh, and was in a coma for a number of months uh, and is now back in San Francisco. Um, I don't want to repeat what has already been said, uh, except that we have spent a great deal of time and energy in the 10 years that I've been a member of this church in focusing on the youth in this community. There are over 200 members of this church, and as uh, Tony Bowers said, over 40% of them are children under the age of 18 years of age. And most of these families live in the city of Lancaster. I know that because I've done the earthquake studies in determining where people live in the church. Um, it's my experience, and it is also, if you'll recall, several years ago when I was a director of the Youth Authority, the city of Los Angeles was besieged by community groups, grassroots groups, church groups, uh, in order not to expand the number of uh, liquor stores and club establishments and places where liquor was sold in the city of Los Angeles, which were next to churches and in community neighborhoods, which would have an impact on children and uh, on parents and people trying to show kids the right way uh, to live. Uh, we're very serious about that. And uh, again, uh, I'm here to ask you not to approve this permit. We're here basically to ask you to help us help you keep this a safe city in which people can live. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir. And another speaker, please, Mr. Luke. Uh, Shirley Ingram. <coughs> Evening, Ms. Ingram, and welcome. My name is Shirley Ingram, and I just wanted to say that I do oppose um, that venue being put next to our church. I'm going to piggyback off of one of Mrs. Uh, Harvey's questions, was um, how are they going to prevent the 21-year-olds from bringing the alcohol to the 18-year-olds? Women nowadays carry a very big purse. If I have a water bottle, an empty water bottle, I can put a shot of vodka, two or three, into that water bottle, bring it over to my 18-year-old friend, and give it to her to drink. Like Sister Pam had said, if I wanted to get drunk, I'm not, I'm not under 21, but if I was 18, I definitely found ways to get drunk. If it was having somebody else buy me alcohol, doing this, doing that, there's no way you can stop that from happening. So um, also, we have many events during the week, not just on Sundays and Wednesdays. And loitering is not allowed basically anywhere in the USA, but it still happens. You cannot control that either because people will throw things on the floor. They don't care. If they're drinking, especially, they're not going to care if a paper towel falls on the floor. And I mean, is the owner really going to go out and clean up at 2.30 in the morning after they're done and left? We start services at 9 in the morning that Sunday, right after Saturday. Is he really going to clean all the parking lot? I mean, who really wants empty bottles or anything laying around, right? Um, and I hear a lot of contradicting from, you know, the Huff Acres. Um, one had said that it's going to be a, a venue for just like 18-year-olds. It's going to be for younger people that want to promote, and um, which is understandable. Um, but the other half acre said it's for the older people, for the 21-year-olds, right? Okay, so the 21-year-olds have this little tiny spot in the whole building. Okay. And um, it just doesn't make sense. Which one is it? Is it going to be more towards the 21-year-olds, the ones that can get drunk, or the ones that can't get drunk? And, uh, like I said, how do you know that kids aren't going to come and sit in the parking lot and wait for their friends to get out of this thing or just hang out, get drunk, or get high in the parking lot? You cannot stop that from happening. Kids will do it. And you can check all you want. I've gotten high from an apple before, before I went to a concert to make it better, or take an acid, or any of that ecstasy, because it makes the experience so much better. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Do we have another speaker? Sharon Spratling. Good evening, Ms. Spratling, and welcome. 
My name is Sharon Spratling, and I am a member of New Life Community Church. I have been a member for about six years. Uh, I, have, I do have family that attend the church also. I have children and grandchildren that attend the church. Uh, our church is community-based, which to me means that we are concerned about our community, not just the immediate surroundings, but all of our community, all of Lancaster. Uh, we feed the homeless. We have events on the weekends, and as one of my um, uh, friends said, we are not just a Wednesday and Sunday church. We have events all through the week. We have events on the weekends also, and a lot of the events do um, concern our youth, uh, and they are uh, there all times of the day and the evenings. So I feel that it would be a detriment to have a club next to a church where you have young people going back and forth. And as the young lady just said, alcohol is alcohol. There is no control over the person who is drinking it. Uh, my body uh, mass might be different from the next person's body mass. So the amount of alcohol cannot be controlled. The reaction from the alcohol cannot be controlled. I don't care how much security that you have, it cannot be controlled. Uh, there's an issue with me of uh, safety. After the person leaves the club, whether they, uh, whether they drink beer or wine, or whatever it is, they have to drive away from that area. We have children that cross that area all the time. We have cars, so their cars are going to be crossing that area where our children are going to be crossing. If we do have an event on the weekend, so that is always a possibility of someone being hurt. I am an ex-partier. I am an ex-clubber. I know what goes on in clubs. It is not, there is no control that you have. Once an incident starts in a club, I don't care how much security that you have, by the time security gets there, the incident is already in motion and causing problems. So it's not about the pretty name that you give it. A club is a club. Alcohol is alcohol. And you can get the same results. And I think the results is very deadly. And having it next to a church, I think, is atrocious. And as I look around, I don't know how many of you have your place of worship where you go, but I would just like for you to just think for a moment, would you like to have a club or any type of uh, venue like that next to the place where you go to worship? And I ask that you please take that in consideration. And thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Do we have another speaker? Jeremy Morgan. Good evening, Mr. Morgan, and welcome. Good evening. How are you guys doing today? Uh, yes, I am a member of New Life Community Church, and uh, as far as putting a club next to the church, I think it's, it's wrong. Um, the main focus on, on me is the youth. Um, our community is full with troubled youth, and as far as our church, our goal is to bring souls to the Lord. Um, the gentleman said that the youth, you know, is a place where you know they can hang out and 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 uh, you know enjoy themselves. But we have stuff like that as well. We have a uh, basketball. We have a uh, stepping. Anything that they're trying to do, we have it. And not only that, but clubs uh, for the youth. There's no safety. I uh, used to do security, and uh, I would pray every night on my job. Uh, that nothing would happen to me because you don't know what would happen. But as far as our church, there is safety in the house. Um, there is no need to put a club next to our church. It's, it's not right. They, anything the youth would need, they need someone that will attend to them emotionally, spiritually. They're not looking to go just to have fun. They're, they're looking to, to fill an empty void that they have in their heart. Our church will fill that void. You know, that's what the youth really needs, and uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments, sir. Another speaker, Mr. Uh, Trevia Marsh. <clears throat> Ms. Marsh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioner. My name is Trevia Marsh. I am the wife of the pastor of New Life Community Church, and I strongly oppose this venue um, being next to the church as a nightclub. Um, there seems to be no really no rules regarding the nightclub. I keep hearing about the venue for the concerts. Um, we 
believe in the old-fashioned working hard, good education, and we teach that to our members, especially to the young people. And we believe this venue would inadvertently affect our young people. We have people who have recovered from being drug addicts, recovered from being alcoholics, and this environment would just hinder their progress. And um, we teach young men to go to work and get a, get a good education to take care of their families and, and the women to, young women to take care of their children don't spend money on alcohol and things like that and take away from your family. And so I strongly oppose this. You know, they can have it anywhere, but why have it next to the church? You know, um, you know the church is like a hospital for people that need help, so I don't know if they want to pray on that um, thing that knowing that they might go there and get the alcohol or, you know, and as far as the drugs concerned, you know, with a nightclub, there's always going to be some type of drug activity. Not that they would like that or that they're promoting that, but that's going to come with that type of venue. And um, as far as it being a concert place for kids, why the alcohol, why is there a nightclub attached to it if it's just for kids hanging out? I don't mix kids and alcohol together. I have two kids of my own, 15 and 18, and we're trying to sh teach them strong family values, wholesome values that I believe the city of Lancaster tried to promote. And I don't think this is part of um, the values that the city of Lancaster uh, Mayor Rex Harris um, promotes. So please um, do not let this pass in our community. We strongly oppose this. We believe in... Um, our youth being empowered by positive things, and I don't believe this would be a positive thing in our community. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have additional speakers, Mr. Ludicky? Cynthia Spears. Evening, Ms. Spears, and welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm here to oppose the conditional use permit as well, and I'm going to come from the point of recovery. Being a recovering person myself and being clean and sober for the past 22 years, at New Life Community Church there's a recovery outreach ministry, and every Friday night we have a meeting, and that meeting is geared towards the youth in the community that suffer from alcoholism and drug addiction. Uh, many of them have had altercations with the criminal justice system, and so what we do is try and promote sobriety, a clean and sober mind, and a safe place to be. And this would be a direct conflict with what New Life Community Church is currently doing. Also, on the uh, corner of 7th Street East and Avenue K, there is a liquor store. Uh, the AMPM on the corner of K and Business Center Parkway sells alcoholic beverages. The liquor store on Challenger and K sells alcoholic beverages. So we are surrounded in this community at this particular location by alcohol. The last thing we need is another venue to provide alcohol to um, people, especially people that may suffer uh, negative impact from that. Um, kids, uh, you know, one thing, uh, kids do need a good place to go, a safe place to go, but I don't believe this venue would be that place to go because it's promoting alcoholism. And as one of the other young ladies said, that corner there, you cannot separate people drinking from those that don't drink. If you're in a club, you're going to want to party with the partiers. So that alcohol is going to leak through, drift through some kind of way. Um, I work with uh, young people, and we see it all the time, and it is not a good thing. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Another speaker? Do another speaker. Uh, Maurice Footman. I didn't hear the last name, I'm sorry. Footman. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. My name is Maurice Footman. Well, I would like to oppose on the nightclub. Me being experienced from that because I came from Florida in 09. I came to New Light Community Church. They accepted me with open arms. My background is I done been to prison twice in Florida because of venues, nightclubs. I did that. That was my thing. You know what I'm saying? I know how to get things to the minors if they want it. 
that was my thing back then. But being here at this church, I have changed my life completely. I'm a minister now. I go to school. You know what I'm saying? I'm, gra I'm finna get my BA in business. You know what I'm saying? I have changed completely because of this church. And we have a nightclub next to this church. You know what I'm saying? This stuff is gonna happen, not just only in the club, but you gotta think about what's happening outside the club. Parties happen outside the club regardless. He says it's a venue for the youth. But if it's for the youth, why are you putting alcohol, wine, and beer? It's not gonna separate, you can't separate that. Because I know when I was going to the, the youth concerts and stuff like that, I can have an older person like my homeboy or my friend go in there, get something to drink, go to the bathroom, put it in a stall, come out. He tells me about it. I go in there, I get drunk, come out. The security don't know because you got so many people walking around and clubbing, you don't know what exactly is going on. You say you're going to have a hundred, you know what I'm saying, one security guard to a hundred people? Come on, for real. One security guard to a hundred people, you can't keep your eye on everybody. You know what I'm saying? Drugs are going to get in, regardless. You're going to have activities in the parking lot. Crime activity is going to rise. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? You're saying it's just for the youth, but I keep hearing about older people going to be there. You got sexual predators. They can be in a band. It doesn't matter. Sexual predators are going to be there because you have youth there. Do y'all really want predators in this neighborhood that, that big? Do you want the gang activities to get bigger? I thought we was trying to control that. You know what I'm saying? So if that's what we're trying to do, don't let this happen. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. Mr. Speaker. Rochelle Edwards. Good evening, Ms. Edwards, and welcome. Hi, thank you. My name is Rochelle Edwards. Of course, you just said my name. And I work for the California Department of Corrections. I've been with the uh, Department of Corrections for almost 17 years. Uh, the first five years was with Parole and Community Services Division. And um, I've looked at the statistics as far as crime that's located. I live in Lancaster, and uh, I work at Lancaster State Prison, and I am now a counselor. I was a correctional officer for about 10 years, and now I am a counselor. And working as a counselor, I review each and every inmate that comes in, and then we make a decision as, as far as the reception center is concerned, where we're going to send those individuals uh, to do their time. We have so many individuals from Lancaster and Palmdale, the Antelope Valley, that have committed crimes while they were at a venue such as that, um, where they are at clubs, they get killed in the parking lots, they get killed inside the clubs, they get assaulted. Individuals are assaulted just by being in the parking lot that have nothing to do with the club itself. They are victims of crimes. I see it every single day. It actually makes me sick. We see the security guards that are inside the institutions because they were trying to save somebody's life and ended up killing someone, and then they ended up inside the institutions themselves. You cannot tell me, I see it every day, that this type of business is going to bring something good. There is nothing good that is going to come out of this business. It's going to be negativity. We already have enough bars and clubs here. We have the Young's Cocktail Lounge. We have Tipsy Bull. We have Breakers. We have Longhorn. We have Rustin House. We have Snookies. We have enough crime here in Lancaster. My daughter, she worked at the Lancaster State, excuse me, at the Lancaster Station as a deputy sheriff. She's no longer there. But she told me that, let me tell you something. She worked at least four hours every single day over. 
four hours overtime because of the crime out here in Lancaster. You still have 30 seconds. Go okay. Ahead. This is going to bring crime. This is going to bring somebody that is at our church is going to get hurt. They're going to get killed. They could get raped. Okay. It's going to be a DUI. There is nothing positive that's going to come out of a club. And if they care about children, why would they put children next to a, a bar? Why would they have kids associated with a bar? They don't even care about the children that they're going to bring inside the club. They don't care about them. Thank you for your Thank comments, you. Ms. Edwards. Do we have another speaker? Jermaine Ingram. Oh, Mr. Ingram. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Um, I'm Jermaine Ingram, and I'm here. I, I just want to touch bases on uh, the drinking close to the church. You know, um, I've lived out here pretty much most of my life, and I grew up, and I was growing up, I was able to get into bars and clubs, and um, the alcohol control is, is no way to get control of that. Um, there was plenty of times where me and my friends would drink in the parking lot or uh, and come inside to save money from buying alcohol inside. There, there's, there's ways people sneak in alcohol, um, the ones that are under 21. Uh, are you, I don't know if they're going to be searching people coming in because I've, I've snuck in alcohol in my pants pocket to come in and buy a soda and refill it with, with alcohol. Um, there's, there's, I heard him say earlier that, that the bartenders will monitor um, how much alcohol a person consume. Now, um, there, there, there's, I don't, I've never seen a bartender cut anybody off from drinking. Um, I've, ne I've never seen it. I've, I've left a club and flipped over my Volkswagen four times uh, and got a DUI, and directly after leaving, leaving the club and. Um, coming to this church, I've been there for nearly three years now, and I've tried all kind of programs. Um, DUI program, uh, the, the program that they, the court sent me to for my DUI. I mean, I was going there drunk to my to my classes, um, but when I came here to this church, they helped me overcome my alcohol, and I see that it's it's a different mind state now that I that I need to be in. Um, that, that's just pretty much all I have to say um, about about drinking. It's, it's not gonna it's not gonna work out there next next to the church. I know it's not. It's gonna bring somebody back a recovering addict. Um, it's just not gonna be good. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Inger. You have another speaker, uh, Paisley Hudson. Evening, Miss Hudson, and welcome. Hi, my name is Paisley Hudson, and I've been a resident of Lancaster since 1993. And in that period of time that I had lived here, I've been in Acton twice, Tarzana Treatment Center once. I frequent the Lancaster County Jail so many times in my stay here that I knew the jailer by her first name. Um, I could not get a grasp on my life. Um, until I found a different way that worked for me. I have been clean and sober off of drugs since 1998. One of the things that I truly believe that has helped us and so many of the other people that have spoken before me is the type of ministry that New Life has. A lot of churches say they are about the community. We truly are. We participate in Relay for Life. My pastor and his wife, they buy single parents. They buy their children's clothes. They sign them up for sports and activities. We feed the homeless for the last seven years at the Lancaster Shelter. Right now, we are preparing to feed them Thanksgiving Day. We are about truly giving to our community. Um, that is what our ministry is based on. We transform lives through the eyes of faith. And I can honestly say 
That's what we intend to do. We keep our young people busy. The majority, they say 40%, I think over half our church, they're young people. Uh, we keep them busy in our community. We have a pastor that promotes education. We have a pastor that promotes every man should take care of his family. No excuses, educations. We have several young people that have graduated from UC Berkeley early, three years. We have several young people that have graduated in this year from UC Riverside, bachelors, masters. This is what we promote, productive, productive, productiveness within our community. We teach to give back. This would be very, very, very neg negative impact on what we have been taught over the last few years. There are so many available spaces where this could go. Out of all the places in the Antelope Valley, I've seen a lot of changes in the Antelope Valley since I came here in 1993. When I came here, we didn't even have the Lancaster Sheriff Station. It was the little station that was on 10th Street West and Avenue J. I know that there is a a huge crime spree in Lancaster. And I just think with having all of that, to put a club directly next to a church that promotes the opposite of what this club is going to promote, I think it would be a sad injustice to the young people at New Life Community Church and the people that are in recovery. Your time's expired, and thank you for your comments, ma'am. <clears throat> Do another speaker, Mr. Ludeke? That's it, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so, um, thank you all for your comments this evening, uh, both those in favor and in opposition. The um, applicant and, and or the representatives will have an opportunity that now to rebut um, if they choose to take that opportunity. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Hoffaker, welcome um, back. Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that the nightclub that it states on the uh, planned, it's just nightclub because the city of Lancaster puts what I want to do as a nightclub because they've never actually had a concert venue. So unfortunately for me, we had to put nightclub on there even though I, I say concert venue, I tell everybody concert venue, but just that's the way the city works, so it says nightclub. But we are not a nightclub. We have concerts, we'll have events, they'll have scheduled times, they'll end, the event will be over, the people will go home. We're not going to have all night come in, drink until 2 a.m., go home, come back tomorrow, drink. This is this lounge is its own room. It's off by itself. There are two doors into it on both sides. Very easy to control. You can't sneak a bottle of beer past two security guards. If you're trying, you're really, really trying, and we will do our, our best to prevent that. It'll be very easy to prevent it. It'll be very difficult for people to sneak in beer. Um, it's just beer. In, in the closed room, when you're done drinking, you have to go outside. It's not a mixed area. It's 21 and over only. So if you're in that area, you can drink. So if you're sharing drinks in there, you're sharing it with a 21-year-old. It's not set up so you take your drink outside and you share your drink with the people in the general dance area. Your drink stays in the lounge. When you're finished, you deposit it. You go out to the area and you watch the venue. Unfortunately, that's not ideal, but that's what the ABC wants. We're doing it because we want to be legitimate. We want what they want, and so everyone's happy. We have this set up the best. We talk to the sheriffs, the ABC. I mean, I've spoken to people. This is how they want us to do it. This is how we're going to do it. This is the best way to prevent it. You can't necessarily say 100% nothing, but we, we do what everybody wants us to do. We do what we can do. We do more than we can do. We will try our very hardest so that no one's drinking. We will have strict security at the front. You will be searched. You will not be bringing in alcohol. You will not be bringing in weapons. If you have those things, you will be removed from the premises. If we have further problems, we'll have to either contact the local sheriffs or figure out another you know, lawful, reasonable response. We're not going to 
embrace you know the types of musics and the type of cultures that will have drive-by shootings or they're going to have shootings or anything like that we're going to have local musicians you know some some guy in high school his band wants to play they're going to play his parents are going to come his mom's going to have a wine his dad's going to have a beer they're going to watch it this isn't you bring your friends to drink this is a concert venue you go to a restaurant your parents can drink you can watch them drink that's not irresponsible no one asks if you're going to share your drink with your kids it's given you you can drink people like drinking adults can drink legally they can do it responsibly and we can help them do it responsibly this venue we the beer is just so people will come here so I mean the the venue is good for the community we need the beer so we can produce money so we can be a feasible business we can't just have concerts and and nothing and people will come and see it because we're competing with all as they mentioned we have lots of bars out here there's lots of places people can go and drink we need to be a competitive business we can't just you know not serve alcohol because it, it's not going to be, be perfect we will serve it it will be done to the best our our capabilities will will meet every requirement we're asked to we'll go above that we'll do whatever it takes to stop it I mean every now and then something might happen we will not be letting it happen what we'll learn we'll figure it out so it doesn't happen again we will do our very best this isn't just you know you come and drink and share it this is this is a concert venue this is my life I've played music all my life I've played in bands I I've snuck in things and I know it's it's easy if you're not getting searched we have security guards we have employees you're not this isn't just walk in pay money walk in this is you're searched you're in then you're at the establishment you're not just coming in and out as you want you're not hanging out in the parking lot because we'll have a guard in the parking lot because we don't want our stuff getting messed up we don't want cars getting broken into we don't want crime in the parking lot we want it to be clean we don't want people doing drugs that's bad for us it's bad for my insurance it's bad for Arnie it's bad for the community we will do our best to be good we will provide opportunities for youths and uh, older people alike to perform and communicate and you know be productive we will do everything we can to make it positive this it will be positive for people we will provide opportunities for young musicians we will have a place that you can perform if you have a band that otherwise can't perform if you're a musician and you want to network with other musicians there's nowhere to go now we will have an opportunity you go you hang out with musicians you talk about music you talk about art it's productive it's a positive environment it'll be controlled it'll be good for everybody essentially I guess that's my statement you, you, hang on a moment there may I'm likely be some questions of you does anyone have any Right ahead. Just out of curiosity, had you ever considered a different location with all well, of the empty buildings in the city? Well, actually, this location is ideal. There's the train tracks behind it. Behind the train tracks, there's Sierra Highway. There's no residences. There's not. All the businesses are closed by 5. If you're there Friday night and nobody's there, it's, there's a sound barrier because a lot of noise is a big problem that we're concerned about. You can't. It's. it's isolated which makes it good because you can't you know walk off come back it's an isolated secure location it'll be easy to secure the parking lot is there's only two entrances in and out we can patrol a parking lot no sweat it's not like some huge expansive parking lot with lots of entrances and exits it the location is ideal for what I want to do it if you're there Friday night at midnight no one's around we're making lots of noise all you hear is the train there's no houses there's there's no schools there's there's nothing even the church is not in service at the time and that's that's part of what we planned because we don't want to interfere with their business unfortunately for those some of those very same reasons that that church chose that location possibly I mean look at the number of folks that you've got that are opposing it. I just wondered if you had considered or if you had a secondary location in mind well I actually went to the city and they suggested this location to me um, and I looked into it and it was an excellent location and it meets all the requirements I need and it, it's where a concert venue should be because live loud sound is a problem you know huge expansive parking lots lots of entrances and exits that's a problem this is an easily controllable desolated 
location. There's, the sound isn't a problem. The parking lot's easy to control. The way the building itself is set up is ideal. There's a, a small room in the front where we can sell tickets, check IDs, distribute wristbands. Also in that room we'll be protecting the door, which is the entrance to where you sell beer. On the other side there will be a, an employee and a security guard, both sides of the door, securing it. It was already built like that, so it's, it's perfect. On the left side, there is a hallway to the dance hall. You won't pass any beer. You're not going to see anything that says, we're selling alcohol. We don't have, we're not going to have signs that say Bud Light. This is just, in this room, you can drink if you're an adult. And when you're done drinking, you can go and watch the concert in the other room. And the way it was set up was perfect. And the location is perfect. And that's why we're where we are. Anyone else? I noticed that you have some letters uh, in favor from different tenants. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you spoke with them. Did you ever speak to the church? Um, I've actually, my doors are always open. I've spoken to a couple people. For, I've been working on this place for four months, decorating it. Did you ever My speak? doors are always open. I've spoken to a couple members. I've spoken to a couple employees. I, I've told them what Did I'm doing. Did you ever speak to the leadership not of the church? The, not the pastor, I guess. I, I'm not exactly sure the title of the people I spoke to. but Because my doors are open, sometimes they come over and talk to me, and I show them around. So you, you, you mentioned that um, you've been under construction for four months? Yeah. Uh, when did you get the permit to do that work? Um, well, a lot of the construction I've been doing was not yeah, That's in not the need question. Of... When did you get the permit to do the work? Well, we, we were getting it as we were doing the work. The bathrooms that we built required permits. The work I've been working on is artistic and decorative, and you don't uh, need permits. So I Because I do all that by myself. When did you get the there. permit to do the do the tenant improvements that required a permit then? Maybe that's the question. Oh, when Before we started constructing the bathroom, we had the inspectors come over and they signed off. And when? Um, the question I, is I don't when? Know the exact was it date, yesterday, sorry. last week, four I'm not months sure ago? The exact date. You it don't know? Before we began construction on the bathrooms. You don't know when it was? Was it like in the month of October? No, it was last month. In the month of September, but you've been at it four months, huh? Well, a lot of the work, once again, was decorative, which I have been doing by myself, so it goes very slow. So, so the studs, that, uh, the, the uh, framing that's been done in there? Oh, that was done after we spoke to an inspector. Ah, so that was after the permit, huh? Yeah, we spoke to, we had Dennis not. It was Dan. after the permit? That's the question. Um, I think so, yeah. The answer is no, it's not after the commit permit. We didn't pull the permit until last week. Well, somebody didn't pull the permit to last week, so it, it's helpful if you know the response, the correct response. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this is the first time, and I. What about the dance floor? What, you've mentioned the dance floor a couple of times. What's that about? If it, if it's a concert venue, what's the dance floor got to do with it? Um, well, you want to have an area so you can view the band that is performing. So it's not a dance floor; it's a viewing area. Well, I, I, you could say that depending on the music, people will be dancing. I'm not if saying it's, it's your application, roll, not mine. Be, well, your application, not mine. Well, it's a dance floor. People will stand there and nod that's their heads. That's typically or, what happens in nightclubs. They have dancing, right? Um, that's that could go either way. Some clubs don't have dancing. It's typically, at all. what happens in nightclubs? Don't mess words with me. Answer the question, please. Well, what was the question? It's typically what happens in nightclubs, is it not? I've been to nightclubs with no dancing. If they have a dance floor and people are dancing, is that typically what happens in nightclubs? I, it could be. I don't go to nightclubs. I apologize. Interesting. <clears throat> the city's alcohol ordinance assumes that the primary alcohol seller, which is your application, is a nightclub may have a negative effect on the surrounding sensitive uses. The waiver process essentially places the burden of proof for the waiver on the applicant. That's you. In other words, it is the applicant's responsibility to justify granting the waiver, not the city's responsibility to justify the separation distance established by the ordinance. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. So what's your justification for granting the waiver, please? Well, the Antelope Valley needs a location for youths and older people alike to express creativity in a positive manner, and this will be a venue to do such. 
So what's the necessity of alcoholic beverages? Um, the feasibility of the business so I can actually stay in business so I can continue to be productive for the community. What do you anticipate the sales volume as opposed to the uh, cover charge is going to be? Um, I would anticipate alcohol bringing in at least 50% of the income. 50%? Really? Alcohol sells. That's why I need to stay in business. It's been stated, and I think it was, maybe it was you that stated it, that the, uh, the venue was to promote uh, young people. Mm -hmm. Who, who don't necessarily uh, drink alcohol because they're not of age. Mm -hmm. So I don't get the nexus between 50% of your sales being alcoholic beverages and 50% of it being either a concession, I assume, or the entry ticket fee. Sales, yeah. Well, ticket sales will be a one-time fee purchased by whoever goes in, but if I don't have alcohol, I, my ticket sales will decline dramatically people will not come and if they're not there they're not going to buy buy stuff it's not just the beer that I'm going to be losing from it's the people who want the beer it's the people who come with that it's not just straight beer sales that's additional ticket sales addition additional concession sales additional bar sales as well so your justification is is the economic viability of the project is the reason to grant the waiver and allow the sales of alcohol beverages yes that would be it yes okay so we're clear Sorry, I interrupted you, Dan. Go ahead. All right. Anyone else, Mr. Hall? Um, the church made a very uh, big point that they are very community orientated, that mm -hmm. they provide lots of activities for their members to stay out of trouble. I was wondering if maybe if they had a um, band or something like that, would you open up your venue for them to? practice on your days that you weren't in operation or operation op, maybe offer some of your professional advice and how they could improve or that would modify that would definitely be something we do we're we definitely be open for rentals you know anything we could do because we really it, we really want kids to be able to play music you know younger people to play music music is a very positive role it was a very positive role in my life it's it's good for people it's extremely productive it's it's a good creative outlet we will, uh, if, if people want to have concerts there, we will embrace it. We will work with them. It's good for everybody. Mr. Trossiano, go ahead. Um, what other concessions would you be selling there besides the beer and wine? Um, we'd have water, sodas, chips, packaged snacks, essentially. Are you planning to have any security for the parking lot outside? Yes. We would have at, at least one security guard in the lot, depending on the size of the anticipated size of the event. If it's a smaller event, it'll just be one. For bigger events, we'll have two people patrolling the... Just to be in the parking outside? Yeah, because parking is... We understand that the parking lot is a big area of concern with people, and we can keep it safe, but it'll just cost a little extra money. How do you respond to the uh, concerns raised by some of the speakers this evening regarding um, their hours of operation as your neighbor and your hours of proposed hours of operation as the neighbor? Yeah, well, actually, my hours of operations are based on their conditional use permit, I believe, because the times that I chose not to be in business and Arnie asked me not to be in business were times that they said they would be open. So we were specifically trying to not be operating at the same hours so that it wouldn't be an issue and uh, in their conditional use permit. So from what you heard this Wednesday evening, Sunday. what I heard this evening, maybe you didn't hear it the same way I did, but I heard this evening that um, your neighbor doesn't, necess doesn't only operate on Wednesdays and Sundays. Yes. They actually have activities at other times that would conflict with your proposed hours of operation. How would you respond to that? Well, once again, we're going to keep the place as secure as possible. We will, we won't really be able to respond because we can't say we're not going to be open on Fridays because that's just not a possibility. 
So, we will, so it's likely that there would be a conflict of, of overlapping activities? At well, our events will be nighttime, and um, I think predominantly their events will be earlier in the night. We will be starting from 7, 8, 9. We will, um, if, we will do our best to keep, you know, the, the everything inside. I mean, we can keep the parking lot secure. We can keep the venue secure. There's not going to be But it's likely that the hours out. would overlap then from what you've heard tonight and what we've heard. It says you can operate from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. based on the proposed conditions on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, which uh, I'm, assume, I'm assuming you've reviewed all the conditions and you agree yes. to all of the conditions yes. that have been proposed by staff. Yes. Yeah. So that, so given that 5 p.m. starting time, potential starting time, would definitely overlap with what the speaker said tonight, right? It, it might. However, I also know that there are events that are not on Wednesdays and Sundays. They're no. not very large. The turnout is not as great, and it's, it's not the full get together. If if they just have a couple people there and we have a concert going on, I don't see that being a conflict. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from any of the uh, members? All right, thank you for your comments, sir. <clears throat> yeah, I will. Mr. Rodeo, thank you. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'd like to respond to a couple of things. Um, Go ahead. You know, th this is being painted as, as this haven for every drug addict, and the valley's going to gravitate toward it. Uh, I personally go to a lot of concerts. I've never had a drink. People can go to this and not drink. People that have self-control can go and not be stoned. People that want to get high, you know, I've seen a lot of people absolutely blasted out of their mind out in the parking lot after they got out of church. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. As far as the sex offender comment, which really kind of ticked me off, the reason these people are in this church is the prior church had a sex offender, and it destroyed the church, and they picked up the lease. So to, con so to sit there and lay a sex offender uh, you know, think that that's going to happen because you may have an older rock band or a group of jazz musicians that are 50 years old that they got to be somehow they might be sex offenders and go after the youth. This is not for teenagers. This is not for a bunch of 12 year old kids. They don't have the money. You're going to be charged 10, 15, 20 dollars to get in, and you might want a beer or two. And it's going to be an older group. Unfortunately, when people think of musicians, they think of young people. They think of kids. That's not what this is focused on. This is a concert venue. I go to the concerts in Lake Arrowhead, and it's a perfect example of what this venue is. Lake Arrowhead has concerts every Friday and every Saturday night. And all they serve is beer and wine at the concession stands, but the restaurants around it, you can get all the hard liquor you want. You can absolutely get blasted, falling down drunk. They have a couple of security guards. I've probably been to 30 of those concerts never have issues. They have a variety of bands. Uh, last week I was there, they had oompa bands for Oktoberfest. Uh, I didn't stay for that whole concert. But um, you can go, you can have a good time, you're there for two or three hours, drink if you want, have a beer if you want, not drink if you want, go home, have a good time. The operating hours when I discussed them with him were put in because he has to show up around five to set up to open up for the bands, make sure the, the amps and stuff all work. So if you have an event that, say, starts at 8, you're going to be there at 7, making sure everything's clean, making sure everything's running to be there. The event would be from 7 to, say, 10, 11, and then it's going to take one, two, three hours for everybody to pack up, leave, and clean up. That's where the hours came from. This is not people that are going to be there at 5 o'clock partying hardy till 2 o'clock in the morning. The actual events are going to be about roughly three hours. I looked at this very hard on the church, and like I told him, I was originally told that the church had Bible meetings and, and things like that on Wednesday. Their main events were all day Sunday, on and off, different times, and, that, and that's what we built it around. This, it's news to me that the church has now expanded to having functions every hour of the day and night, every day of the week, because I drive there a lot, I work there, and I don't see it. 
They also have another facility on 7th Street East where a lot of the outreach community programs that they do, they still function from. So some of what they're claiming to do, which is very good work, and I take my hat off to them, aren't even handled at this facility. So I took a very hard look and we tried very hard to come up with a clean, safe environment, a good venue that didn't conflict with anybody, um, and this is the only thing. Uh, I don't think it's right to tag this venue as a nightclub. I don't think it's proper to tag it as a something that's going to cause alcoholics to go off the wagon. I don't think it's right to tag it as something that the kids are all around town are going to drive up in the parking lot just to get wasted on drugs. Because that's not what this is about. This is about going in and having a good, clean time, enjoying music. And like I said, I do it just about every other weekend up at Lake Carrowhead at their concert series, which I believe is one of the largest and longest running in, the, in California. And it is a lot of fun, and it's an opportunity. Um, if there's conflicts, we'll work them out. I did talk uh, to Chuck. We do have language in the lease, but I've already talked to Tully, and we're going to uh, actually strengthen it. So if there's problems, they'll be cleaned up. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodeo, there may be questions for you. Thank you. Anyone? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my concern is uh, not that you might work out the concerns later on. Um, did you contact the church beforehand? I tried for six weeks leaving messages. I was originally contacted on this that we needed a letter because usually, you know, you send out the cards and the city would say, hey, can you talk to various people there, see if there's a problem? Well, I'd, this has been ongoing for four months and I've talked to a number of people and never found anybody objected. But I did. I, uh, we tried calling the church. I was out of town. My office did. I left uh, numerous messages. <clears throat> I was finally contacted about a week ago. I explained that this is basically a concert venue, and we just needed a letter that there wouldn't be a conflict because it was different times. And I didn't think there was going to be a problem. Uh, I received a call last night uh, that they had just looked at this, and there was a problem because they didn't want a nightclub next to the church. I go, but it's not a nightclub, and I tried to explain it, but I can't get beyond the nightclub label. And, like, the problem is that the ordinance for this exclusion is a nightclub title, but it's not what, the, what it is. It's, you know, it's lumped into what it is. It's not a nightclub, and I can't get past that with the church. So perhaps is this a conflict that you couldn't work out then? Well, this is a conflict I found out like 24 hours ago. Uh, <clears throat> the conflicts I figured would happen would be you're having a concert and you're trying to hold church on the same day or uh, things like that. You know, you can't have that. That's why he's specifically barred. There is nothing on Sunday, period. He's, no rehearsals, no cleanup, nothing. He won't even be there on Sunday. So those are the type of conflicts. If there uh, was going to be something during the week, We've arranged it the way the parking lot is set up that we can cone off a section for the church, like say they want to do youth counseling on Monday, and add that to their repertoire. That section is very easy to cone off. They have reserve parking that we've given them. They can park there. They can go in, do the counseling or whatever. Most of the other activities that they talk about are very small groups. It's not like all 200 members of the church are at them. So we can easily control those spaces and you know, it shouldn't be a problem. And if there is, you know, there's ways to w work it out. But like I said, it's n I looked really hard at what it is as far as bad influence. And I, you know, some of the places they're naming, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of other ones that are very legitimate, very well supported venues that have problems. I mean, there's places on Lancaster Boulevard have serious issues on the weekend and that, that serve hard liquor. Uh, this isn't what this is about. This is about the actual performance. And, you know, the other thing, nightclubs, you go there and, hey, man, we're going to go down to Schooners and, and get one. This is going to be one week might be country western, one week might, might be rock. The other thing is no rap. That's specifically excluded. There is no rap, no gangsta, none of that type of music. The worst, the heaviest it's going to get is rock and roll, old style rock and roll, maybe some heavy metal, but no rap, no gangster music, none of that. Uh, that's specifically not allowed. And that's an agreement that has been uh, agreed upon because that is a bad element. And there's a lot, there's experience in this town of that element creating problems. 
And so we've tried to head everything off that possibly be could. An answer to your permits, the basic building was basically constructed. Um, and Tully's been in there for about three months painting it, uh, decorating it, building little things to hang on the wall for sound, stuff like that. The front area had a bathroom that has to be reconfigured because he needs more toilets. Uh, I went to the city. We had the original floor plan. I got uh, permission to, it's been submitted to plan check, but I got permission to frame up and lay it all out so you could physically see it. Uh, we haven't done any work on it for weeks. It's sitting waiting for the final uh, approval before you know we can cover everything up. So it, we just still studied it so we get the sense of the space and be able to uh, show what it was and make sure everything worked. Um, but you know, I, me and my son still studied it. Um, so, but again, it's not even wood studs. It's all steel studded, all top of the line uh, stuff. It, it, this is a venue that's built to stay. Uh, he's invested a huge amount of money into it already to make sure that this is something that you know the city can be proud of and supplies uh, a benefit to the city. Uh, there's you know the downside of this, of course, you know if you don't take care of it, you're not going to have a business. And uh, we've taken everything we can to make this successful. Thank you. There may be I'm other not, questions. I'm not yeah. done yet. <laughs> My concern is you're asking us to do something that you th you say is going to be good for the city, and and I have to admit that what he says he's going to do, I like the idea, um, and and I don't take everything literally that's been said tonight. What right. my problem is, is that so far you have a problem in your center, and you're asking us to approve a project that so far is not wanted within a couple hundred feet. It's wanted by one group. It's basically one person talking because the pastor told his members to come here and fight this because he doesn't want uh, this uh, uh, venue there because of it. Every other person that is in the center, every other person that has a financial stake, every other person that has a business interest in that center has no problem with it. So how do you propose to solve problems if it's just one person that apparently you can't agree on something with that you haven't talked to. Well, like I said, I tried for six weeks, uh, you know, and I get, you know, I got the call last night. But yet he pays you rent and you huh? can't talk to him. Well, yeah. Okay. I don't have anything else. You know, Thank you. I mean, Go ahead. I mean, if there's a conflict, I'm willing to let them out of their lease. Let's put it that way. Well, perhaps that should have been done. Mr. Rodeo, Mr. Rodeo. Oh, sorry. You, you, you volunteered to stand up here, so. Okay, no, I thought it was done. I'm sorry. Get the opportunity to respond. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Actually, I, I apologize, Mr. Rodeo. This, would it be appropriate for me to, to pose a question to staff right now? Just a real quick question to uh, Mrs. You Donovan. You certainly may to clarify something. So. Yes, actually. Go ahead. You know, we keep throwing around what's um, considered a nightclub, what isn't. Just for my own edification, what does the city deem or define a nightclub? I'm confused. The definition comes out of the city's alcohol ordinance, and um, essentially it is written to state that regardless of whether you sell alcohol or don't sell alcohol, if you have activities that are generally deemed as being part of a nightclub, concerts, dancing, gathering to listen to music, that the ordinance basically deems it a nightclub. The, the ordinance doesn't recognize or define a concert venue as, as a definition. The closest thing that it comes to in our code is a nightclub. So, so understand clearly, if the applicant stood up here and said, I'm not selling any alcohol at all, it would still be defined as a nightclub under the city's code because it contains entertainment, potentially dancing or listening to music. Thank you. I've been educated. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a question of Mr. Rodeo? Nope. Anyone? Um, so I, it's clear that, at least to me and, and hopefully to everyone here, the, the proposed approval is a discretionary approval on the part of the commission. And, and um, you know, I've heard your comments r regarding the applicant investing tens of thousands of dollars in a facility in advance of an approval. And, and, and that's clear to you. No, I understand that. Uh, so there is a, certainly an element of risk that on behalf yeah, of the 
yeah, he, that you've taken as, as well as the, the applicant. Well, I am taking. Who, who knows what the outcome will be, but just so it's clear. Well, just so you know, I, don't, I haven't taken the risk. Uh, uh, I don't own any of this. I just lease the building. He uh, he pays his rent. He leases the space. He's doing it. He's the one that's put the money into it. He's the one that's taken the the risk uh, on this uh, facility. He's uh, one of these guys that wants to learn everything and, and do it. And he wasn't totally up on the process. And he's been going through the steps. And he's gotten a really good education, uh, including tonight. Uh, but. You know, he's tried to do everything right. He's never said that's un something's unreasonable. He's never, even my requests, which are tougher than the city's, uh, he's tried to make it all work. Uh, you know, I know he's talked to various people at the center because I've had people come over and they look at it. Everybody likes it. I know that some members of the church had been in when the doors were open, and I didn't know there was any disagreement until last night on this uh, thing, and it kind of caught me totally by surprise because I don't see the conflict. If, if it was on Sunday, I agree. If it was when he's holding a major event, I could see it. But it's specifically designed to avoid it. I have other buildings where we, because of parking things, guys do stuff in the evenings, guys do stuff in the mornings so that we can get the parking. You know, you have to limit because you have so much space and stuff. And, you know, we looked at this as something that by coordinating it, there's, there shouldn't be any issues. And the fact that you have a, a concert venue next door, I don't see where that's going to turn all your kids into dope fiends. I mean, if having a concert venue next door uh, to where you go to church, uh, there's something lacking if that turns your kids into dope fiends. You know, uh, they all here talk about how they snuck stuff in and how they were wasted and how they were recovering alcoholics and stuff. And I take my hats off to them that they were over, able to overcome it. But it wasn't the concert venue that did it. Maybe they were at a nightclub. Uh, I'll give you a good example, like the bit where you can take the beer and hide it in the bathroom. Can't do it. You can't. There, there's no direct link between the bathroom and where he has the alcohol. They have to go by the guard and try and carry the beer out somehow by security. Go down the hall to hide it in the bathroom. It shouldn't be able. To, it, it won't be able to happen. So. You know, I, you know, I wish all of you guys could have seen the place because if you walk through, you see some of these controls are hard to visualize. But it's it's a nice setup, and we've really tried to have no impact on anybody other than having a good time. So it's, is it your opinion as the um, representing the, the applicant then that the alcohol beverage sales are an integral part of the application and approval, and if alcohol beverage sales are not approved by this commission, that the business is doomed to failure? I don't know if it would be doomed to failure, but it would be really hard to make it work. Um, the, just because there's a lot of people that they go to event like this, they like to have a beer. I don't see people coming to this to get drunk. It's not that type of a thing. You may go to a bar to get drunk, to drown your sorrows. Uh, you generally don't go to a concert of a band you really like to drown your sorrows. Uh, you know, they'll usually go uh, to that. I mean, if you think of all the concert venues from, you know, from the Universal Amphitheater to, to uh, you know, the Forum, all those places, you know, I, I believe even El Pac sells wine uh, at that. There, there's generally, I mean, like if you go to El Pac and you have a bottle, uh, glass of wine because you're enjoying a great pianist or something like that, you know, it's not something that's going to, you know, turn you into some sort of a alcoholic. Um, the hard, the hard liquors aren't part of this. They're not intended to be part of this. Uh, I would say that you know he could have gone in with a, a plain um, request for a venue, and we discussed this, and he didn't want it, and I didn't want it. But going with a plain venue, no alcohol, and then have it catered, and the caterer can bring in alcohol and their own license. Hard liquor. Not without a conditional use permit, they can. Well, no, I'm saying if you got a conditional use permit, and then and you know what I'm saying have a caterer with the, the liquor license. That's all out. He, you know, he doesn't want any hard liquor. I don't want any. It's just beer and maybe wine. That's it. And uh, a bartender should be able to tell when some guy's bought his fourth or fifth glass of beer. Uh, and it's going to be very pricey. It's going to be four, five, six bucks a, a glass. So, you know, that's what's been looked at. All right, thank you for coming. So there may be other questions. Anyone? All right, then. I just like. Right. Well,
If are we done with Mr. Rodeo? Do you have yeah. a questions of it? All right, thank you. Uh, before we take our own comments, um, so are we done with public comments? I have no. I'm interest. sorry, folks. Uh, I, I have no. Proceed. You may have not been here in the beginning. The way it works is the public hearing is open for the applicant, then speakers in favor or against, and rebuttal, and then we're finished. So, uh, if all the all of the speakers who have filled out speaker cards are finished and we've had rebuttal, then it's appropriate to close the public hearing without objection. All right, and Mr. Tarasian, go ahead. No, maybe I'll save my comment, but maybe a po parliamentary question for Joe. <clears throat> Is there any way to bifurcate the waiver from the motion, taking the, the waiver separate, voting on that separately? The, the question, make sure that we understand it. You're asking, can you take the issue of the waiver separately Make a decision on that as opposed to a decision on the concept the of entertainment right. use itself, which also, of course, requires a use permit in this case. Yeah, I, I think you can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. However, um, it's somewhat risky. Um, drafting motions um, that are legally binding uh, when you're not prepared to, unless staff is prepared and city attorney is prepared, um, and I, you're shaking your head, and you're likely not prepared to modify the proposed motions before us and the proposed resolutions. No, because I, I think it, what you would need to do is is obviously I think in terms of timing you would need to first decide the issue of the waiver because that obviously determines whether or not alcohol is a part of the of the of the use um, then you would have to decide separately the the entertainment use itself which would require a conditional use permit irregardless of whether of whether alcohol was involved but Probably in drafting a, a resolution, we would want to have the reasoning of the commission in terms of, you know, particularly the the waiver. Um, so if that is an approach that you're looking at, we can do it one of several ways. Uh, we could continue the whole matter to your regular meeting in November. Um, you could, and this has been done by previous commissions, essentially make the decision uh with your with your reasoning and staff can draft a a resolution based on that decision that you can uh you know essentially ratify at your november meeting <coughs> those are the two choices i think thank you all right then before we proceed uh, um, commissioners may have some comments and questions of staff uh, beyond what's already been asked so i'll open it up for any and all. Anyone? No? Anyone? All right then. Um, so we have a recommendation before us which is um, adopting resolution 11-18 approving conditional use permit 11-10. Anyone care to offer a motion? I move to adopt resolution number 11-18, approving conditional use permit number 11-10. Do I have a second? Well, to get it on the floor, I'll second. Thank you. All right, then. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion, please. Anyone? This motion... Um, makes this all over. This includes the waiver. Yeah, the way that the way the resolution is drafted, um, it, it clearly approves the project with uh, all the conditions 
listed all 18 conditions. And uh, uh, however, um, anyone can appeal the matter. Uh, that's if, it's, if in fact it is approved by this commission, uh, whatever way it goes, uh, it can be appealed um, in this city. And then it would go to the city council and city council will make the final approval. That'd be correct, Mr. Adams. All right. So, Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Any other comments? Now, personally, I'm not convinced that alcohol beverage uh, sales um, are appropriate in this location for this venue. Um, and for that reason, I'm, I will vote no on the motion. However, uh, I typically don't say well, I'm going to vote before I vote, but in this case, I will. Um, Although I, I think this type of a venue is is uh, something that's needed in this community, not the nightclub, per se. However, the concert type venue, I am concerned that um, the applicant uh, has not engaged his neighbor, and um, uh, it would be my recommendation. Um, that we continue this matter rather than uh, approve it and uh, let the applicant and uh, those interested in promoting this venue to meet with their neighbors and see if they can allay their concerns and if they can bring it back to the next meeting and if they can't bring it back in the next meeting and and let us hear from uh, the folks again um, it just seems to be a very contentious matter and and uh, Maybe the neighbor's fears are founded and, or unfounded. I just don't know. But uh, it concerns me that, um, that so many folks have come out here tonight to raise issues that should have been dealt with before it ever got here. That's my feeling. So um, We do have a motion before us, however, uh, if the folks that uh, offered the motion and seconded it wish to have a vote on it, if you do, then we will vote. Can I make, since we have an active motion, can I take uh, and table the motion and uh, offer a, a motion to continue it at the next meeting? You can offer a motion to table it, certainly, and, and then uh, if that motion is successful, then it uh, must be brought back at the next regular meeting, and that motion and a motion to table is in order. Pardon? If, uh, second concurs. Right. No, the motion to table is in order. The, the, the uh, and and a motion to table does not need a second. Is that right, Mr. Adams? Ms. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the, probably procedurally the easier way to handle it would be to for, the maker, for the maker of the motion and the second to withdraw, simply withdraw the motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to withdraw the motion. I concur. All right. So the motion's been withdrawn. Um, so what's your pleasure, folks? Just so I'm clear, what, what part of the issue are we tabling? The entire issue at, at hand? Could be. Or we can just continue it and take it up next time. Well, that's that's one method. But I think I think the, that that. Um, Personally, I think folks need, if we continue the matter, table the matter, whatever the case may be, uh, uh, we're just delaying a decision. So um, if, if there's something that needs to be done between now and whenever that is, next meeting or, or otherwise, then folks need that direction, whatever that is. I'll make a motion to continue this matter to the November meeting. Yes. Do I need a second one? 
All right. I second that. Thank you. All right. It's been moved and seconded to continue this matter till our next regular meeting. Is there a further discussion on that? Anyone care to offer direction to anyone? Anyone? Why are we tabling it? Um, so we'll allow our um, petitioner for the CUP to reach out to the church and see if there's some sort of arrangement that they can make and um, go that route. That would be my recommendation. See okay. if we can. Any other comments from anyone? Thank you. Mr. Ludicky? No, I believe I mean believe that Commissioner Hall kind of answered one of my questions. Normally, when a commission looks to continue it, it's for a specific reason, and it sounds like that's specific direction to the applicant. I'm sorry, I apologize, Chairman Vos. I guess I'm still unclear as to pushing it forward. What part of the issue, the entire issue? I guess I don't understand. My sense is that the concerns raised by uh, the neighbor, the, the church, who currently has a conditional use permit that we approved last year uh, on, their, on their operation and the proposed conditional use permit, um, those folks need to get their heads together and, and spend some time together and see if they can work out their differences. And uh, whatever the results of that workout might be, uh, then they can bring it back to us at the next regular meeting and tell us what their conclusions are. They may agree to disagree. Who knows? Um, that's my sense of it. It's not your sense of it? Uh, no, respectfully. Um, it, it appears to me as it's pretty black and white, they don't want it there. Um, and maybe I'm miscalculating or miscalibrating the, the audience. I don't know. I. I guess that's where my confusion lies, is what, what would we be pushing to November? If, if folks don't meet together and, and have a uh, discussion, um, a respectful discussion certainly, about uh, their differences, uh, folks never uh, can come to an understanding, an agreement, a compromise, or a disagreement, but they need to get together and, and see if they can work out their, their issues, um, whatever they may be, real or perceived. Um, some of them, for, for some folks, are very real. And certainly for, uh, seems to me, the applicant as well as uh, the neighbors are, have some real disagreements. And in the past, um, uh, disputes tend to we worked out when folks can sit down together in a, in a calm setting and, and have a meaningful discussion. Um, I, 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 know the, I know the applicant's, applicant's landlord certainly has done that in the past. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't be a successful landlord, <laughs> and he certainly is. So I would encourage folks to do that and, uh, during this this time period. We don't have the authority to tell them to get together, but it's only a suggestion. That, that's my feeling on it. We may, we may vote to approve it, we may vote not to approve it, but given what we've heard tonight, uh, I think people need to spend a little time together and see, see if, if the differences can be resolved or if they can't. That's just my, my feeling on it. So at this stage of the game, our applicant, um, Mr. Huffaker, cannot operate his venue at all. You can't, he, can, he can't operate a, a, a concert venue uh, or, or a nightclub nor sell alcoholic beverages, right? That's correct. And the holding point of this whole process is, is that the applicant wants to sell alcohol in this uh, concert venue or slash nightclub. And we're holding him up from opening up the concert venue because of the alcohol. Well, there's a distance requirement for the use. There's a dist distance requirement, alcohol or otherwise, right? No, the distance requirement is only for the sale of the alcohol. That's the only request for the waiver. 
there's still the issue of whether or not the use itself is appropriate in the location. We still have to make a finding. Yes. If it's but, the, but the waiver specifically is only for the sale of the alcohol. Right. Which is tied together in the resolution that's before us. As, as recommended, yes. As recommended. And it's your recommendation if we were going to make any modification to that, that we should um, try not to legislate uh, from the dais without something in writing before us. I'm, putting well, words in your, I'm kind of putting <laughs> words in your mouth. It, uh, let's, let's just put it this way. Um, resolutions drafted on the fly sometimes don't quite meet the requirements that you'd like them to. Correct. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Good. You'll explain it to us later. <laughs> now, seriously, this is a serious matter, and we take it very seriously, and I, and I hope you folks understand that. This is a, a, a challenging matter before us. Um, placing a church in an industrial park uh, with other vacancies um, uh, was done without, uh, w not without consideration to potential other, uh, other potential tenants who may wish to locate that might uh, be viewed as a conflict. So uh, the matter is before us to continue until next regular meeting uh, resolution excuse me CUP 11-10 any further discussion a yes vote would be continue and a no vote would be not to continue please vote motion passes 6-0 all right thank you uh, that concludes our public hearing matter. The director's announcement. Uh, just to uh, uh, bring to the commission's attention, tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock in the council chambers is the final community meeting on the uh, master plan of trails and bikeways. Uh, that will include a summary uh, from our consultants of the uh, components of the plan, uh, as well as the opportunity for uh, the public to make any final comments that they would like before that draft plan is completed and begins its uh, hearing process in front of the Architectural and Design Planning Commission, which is scheduled to commence on the 3rd of November. Thank you. Um, on the commission agenda, we were uh, we did receive a distribution of sign uh, proposed or existing, I should say, sign regulations in uh, three commercial centers locally for our consideration. And uh, staff, I'm assuming, is awaiting some awaiting some comments back from us if, if you have them. Uh, yes, we'd like you to take the time to look at those centers, look at the wording in the in the. Uh, Sign criteria. I know. I know. It's it's asking you to do a little bit of field work, but we thought it might be an appropriate point to kind of trigger some discussion, at least, uh, you know, on the commercial side of the the equation, um, and see whether or not you like the sign results in those centers, or whether there are things that you think could be done better. And I think that that would not be a bad way to at least begin our our discussions. All right. Thank you. Any, anything further from the members? Will we be discussing those sign regulations at the next agenda review or? Well, what's your pleasure? That's really up to you as a commission. Uh, staff would be more than happy to do that. Um, I would suggest, you know, if you if you wish to do that, maybe setting as we did before a, the uh, meeting at an earlier starting time if, if the commission's in fact available for that. So that would be um, 14th? Uh, yes, I believe that is the correct date. Would we, would we be prepared to take up sign regulations on the 14th at, what, 430? Yeah, I believe that's when we began the, the previous one. So that would give us a month or so to review the, the three uh, 
regulations or existing sign regulations that are on three existing commercial centers that are developer generated as opposed to city generated regulations, Correct. right? Correct. And that would be the beginning point of our discussion. Just to yeah, get, I think to get, I think to get something yes. on the table. Yes, I think I think that would be a good way to start. All right. So can everyone make four thirty next, whatever day it was? 14. I just said fourteen. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ludicky. Okay. All right. Now comes anything else? I'm sorry. From anyone? Nope. Uh, public business from the floor, non-agendized items. This portion of the agenda allows an individual the opportunity to address the commission on any subject regarding city business. Under state legislation, no action can be taken on non-agenda items. Members of the public should be aware of this when addressing the commission regarding items not specifically referenced on the agenda. Please complete a speaker's card for the recording secretary. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each. Do we have any speakers on non-agendized items? I have no cards, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Then, uh, without objection, we stand adjourned to the, me uh, to the meeting, <clears throat> to a special meeting, I should say, at 4.30 p.m. November 14th uh, in the planning conference room here at Lancaster City Hall. And our 4.30 meeting will be um, the beginning of uh, sign regulation review. And then at 5.30, we will have our regular staff briefing on uh, the November uh, Planning Commission agenda. Thank you very much for your attention and consideration tonight. Thank you all.